Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about the Schroeder frequency. The Schroeder frequency is a, a term to uh, illustrate the difference between how waves impact the room versus rays. And we've done quite a few videos on waves and rays, and uh, we have a really good video, that ocean video on waves that you should look at to, to figure that. But basically, uh, Schroeder was a, a German engineer. I, he's the same gentleman that brought us quadratic diffusion. So he he's, was a very good acoustician. But he said the room is basically two parts. We have a resonator and a reflector. Well, the resonator deals with wave energy or low frequency, and the reflector deals with the ray energy, which is the higher, middle and higher frequency. So Schroeder's telling us that the room is really two parts. And a lot of people don't get that. They think that it's just one part, but it really has two parts. And the energies and the problems and the issues that each part has completely different. You use similar technologies, but completely different approaches, okay, in, in terms of square footage, positioning, all kinds of variables. So in, t in today's small rooms, it's, it's typically between the 100 and 200 cycle range, probably closer to this, to the 200 cycle in today's small room. So what does that mean? Well, that means that in our room, anything less than 200 hertz has to have one kind of treatment, and anything greater than 200 cycles has to have another type of treatment. Now, where is this energy going to be problematic? Depends on room size and volume. That's why I always have you fill out that room form, so I can compare it to our database, which is all these rooms that have measured data for pressure and reflections. They, they've been pressure mapped and reflection mapped, so we can tell where the issues are right away save you a lot of trouble in measuring and time. So the bottom line here is it's where in the room are we going to have our high pressure and where are we going to have our reflection issues. How do we calculate it? It's the reverberation time in seconds divided by the volume of the room in meters. Got to keep those two straight. The quotient then is square rooted and times 2000, which is a constant. So I just threw that in there so you could get an idea. So it's reverberation time and volume. Remember, I'm always talking about volume, 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 okay? And today's small rooms don't doesn't have any volume. So that's always a problem is it has an impact on everything. Here's a good, I, uh, good situation and a good example to show that even reverberation and lower frequency pressure are related. So you have to look at what's going on here. There's a lot of variables and they all have to be uh, married together and get along. And how often does that happen? Never with humans. So anyway, pressure, treatment. What are we going to use for the resonator part or the wave part or the low frequency part of our room? We have three. Diaphragmatic membrane Hemholtz. Diaphragmatic, the most powerful. That's the one we use. We've hot rodded a, a lot with our carbon technology. Membrane, it's the cousin of diaphragmatic. Can get as low as diaphragmatic, but not at the rates and not at the level that you really need in today's smaller room. So it's a good product to use correctly. And then Hemholtz, very frequency specific, narrow band in its absorption. Diaphragmatic, very broad band. So you can get more for your uh, space requirement. So always keep that in mind. For reflections or the reflector or the ray part of the room, what are we going to use? We'll have two, absorption and diffusion. Which one? Depends on usage. Control room, mix room, different usages. I mean, you can fine tune it that severely. Vocal room, way different than a drum room. So once again, it depends on usage. So this will give you a little bit of overview about the Schroeder frequency. It's in your mind, you have to now start to think of your room as having two parts. A resonator, which produces unwanted pressure because the dimensions, the energy won't fit. And the reflector, which is all the reflections off the walls and, and surface areas. And those all have to be married together and work together. If you have too much resignation and not enough reflection, you'll have low frequency boom. If you have too much reflection and not enough resonator balance, you'll have that tinniness, that high, that digitalitis that we call uh, off-room surfaces and, and source material too. So hope that helps with uh, shorter frequency. Thank you. I hope you enjoyed our videos today, and if you did, we really would appreciate a thumbs up from you. If you have any questions or comments, you can go to the comment section. 
or you can go to our website, AcousticFields.com, and fill out the contact form. Subscribe to our channel, our YouTube channel. We're now doing two videos a week. If you have some ideas for topics, you can uh, submit those to us also. If you're having room issues, we have that free room analysis. You can click on the button below, and we'll compare your room to our database of 120 built rooms that uh, we built and actually measured, and I guarantee you your room is in that database. So just click on the button below for the free room analysis. Thank you.